Hey guys, it's a Tuesday, so I almost said Saturday. It's Tuesday, so you know what that means. It's time to paint live together. I'm Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor, and I teach women how to paint door hangers. And so today we're going to be painting this fun trio of candy corn. And um, we're even going to be adding a fun little splatter paint to it at the end. So that ought to be fun and messy. <laughs> Um, I'm getting your comments pulled up here on the screen for just a second, but as you're coming in, tell me hello. Let me know who's watching. Let me make sure this is muted so I don't hear myself. It's much easier to read comments over here on my computer than it is on, on the screen. Hello, hello. Welcome, guys. So we're going to be painting candy corn, adding splatter paint, and lettering to it. Um, one of the things I get asked all the time, hey Jennifer, good morning Pamela, is um, after I paint over the words, can you still see them? So we're going to show you that yes, you can still see the words after you paint over them. This is one of the new designs that we released in the shop on Friday. Every Friday we uh, sell five new designs and so this was one of the new ones. Hey Jennifer and Sharon, or Shannon, <laughs> no, I've got my glasses on and I still can't read your name correctly. Hello, Lisa and Rhonda. So this is one of the wooden blanks that we have in our shop. It does come with the design on the surface, but if you're a handy kind of gal and you know how to use tools and you have like a, a jigsaw or a scroll saw, you can also get the template for this one to cut out your own wooden blank um, at home. Hey, Debbie from Huntsville, Alabama. I have family down in that area. Hey, Kim. Uh, hi, Christy, you're excited to catch me live. Well, hello, hello. If you did not get a text, before I went live, letting you know I was getting ready to go live and paint. You can get, what is going on with his hair? You can get um, text notifications by texting me, and I did put my number in the video description. Um, and you can also text me pictures of your projects, which I love seeing. Um, I have the Glowforge Pro, Lori, Glowforge Pro. Now this one actually was not cut on the Glowforge Pro. It was cut on my new machine, which is a Thunder Laser. It's the Nova 24. And so um, I cut it on the Nova 24. And I, I think the lines are a little darker because you can set like the, the settings to be a little bit uh, stronger. And so um, I should be able to see these through the paint, no problem. You love this shirt and earrings. This one is one from um, last year, actually, from uh, Framed by Sarah's T-Shirt Club. Hi, Robin from Louisville. Hello, Priscilla. Okay, so we're gonna use this Deco Art Outdoor Living paint. It's got built-in sealer in it. And so I'm going to use this as a base coat. Another question I get asked all the time is, do you always base coat or prime your projects first before painting them? No, I don't always. Um, but in this case, since candy corn is made up of three colors, white, yellow, and orange, yellow and orange do not cover well. So if I don't base coat this, the yellow and the orange are going to be somewhat transparent and we'll still be able to see the wood grain through the paint really badly. And so um, I'm going to kind of fix that by coating it with white first and it will save me a step because um, there's white in the door hanger. I think the tops are white. I always have to Google what order the colors are on the candy corn, but it's white, orange, and then yellow at the bottom. I always think orange is at the bottom for some reason, but it's not. Hey Deb, she said, I now love painting door hangers. I'm obsessed. That's kind of what happens when you start painting door hangers. You get hooked on it, and before you know it, you're obsessed, and that's all you think about is like, ooh, what's the next door hanger I'm gonna paint? <laughs> If you're not already following me on TikTok I've been and on Instagram, I've been posting on uh, TikTok and Instagram Reels some funny little videos that you might be able to relate to. Um, and so one of them, I was holding up a box full of painted door hangers and it was like, how many did you get? I got nine. I got nine. <laughs> it was like a an audio from, I don't know if it was from the Bridesmaids movie, but it was Melissa McCarthy's voice. Those are so fun to do. Um <laughs> you always have that problem too, Deetra. I always get it mixed up. I always think it's orange at the bottom, then yellow, then white at the top. Who else is hooked on door hanger painting? Sandra is. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you guys paint door hangers regularly? Or how, like how many of you guys have never painted a door hanger? I'm always surprised to hear how many people watch me have never had the courage to actually paint one. It's not as scary as you think promise. Just pick up, pick up a brush and get started. I think everybody's always afraid that they'll like ruin the piece of wood and then they'll want to throw it away and they'll get frustrated and they'll just be like, I'm done with this. But you don't have to, it doesn't have to be like that. 
follow one of my tutorials step by step. Take it slow. Give yourself a little bit of grace. You're going to, you know, have mess ups and boo-boos. That's why we always have our baby wipes handy. Thank you for sprinkling the love, Michelle. Um, Template Club has already been sent out, Calf. Uh, it was sent out on the first of the month. So, if for some reason you didn't get it, you probably need to message um, customer service. <laughs> Billy says, every day. Do you paint every day? Brenda says you can't do the lettering. Well, lucky for you, Brenda, designs like this already have the lettering on them, so you don't have to freehand any lettering. You just have to kind of paint inside the lines, kind of like paint by number, but you're painting the letters. Autumn says, thank you for getting me through this week with your videos. Oh, you're welcome, Autumn. Has it been a rough week? I always hate how some of our holidays fall on a Monday. It's so odd. It's hard to kind of like pick up on Tuesday and pretend like everything's normal. <laughs> and then by the end of the week, we don't know what day it is. It's always so confusing. Why don't they put all holidays on like a Friday and just give us a long weekend that way? That way we can start fresh on Monday and not be confused. Kat says, I've never painted one except the one I did in your class. Oh, okay. Well, then you're started off on the right foot then by following a, a lesson. So you just need to decide what you're going to paint next. Sharon wants you to tell her the 20% off code for Painter's Oh, Space. I can't tell you the 20% off code on the video here because then everybody would have the code. If you want the discount code for Painter's Clubhouse, you're going to have to log into the Painter's Clubhouse and copy and paste it from there. Um, it will save you 30% on the DecoArt website for buying paints. It'll save you 20% in our shop if you want to buy templates or wooden blanks. And it also saves you 20% on Template Club. Autumn just got her power back. Wonderful. Nine days without it. That's a long time to be with no power. Did you, did you uh, have to clean out the freezer? <laughs> you stopped cleaning house to paint every single day. <laughs> Your husband is not thrilled. Maybe you just need a housekeeper then. That way you can just paint all the time. Don't have to worry about the house. Which brush are you using? It's a flat tip brush. It's a fairly large one. That way it can paint, you know, a large area. And this is a glitter brush from um, Murals and More by Jamie Connor. She makes these glitter brushes. Good morning, Hannah. Hello. Oh, Billy, I'm so sorry to hear about your daughter. Her daughter has COVID. We'll definitely be saying a prayer for her. Oh, you had a generator. Oh, that's help, helpful. We had an ice storm here back in 2009, and nobody had generators, so everybody was, like, buying them up. My uncle drove a generator down from St. Louis, where he lived at the time, and brought it to us because you couldn't find a generator anywhere around here. <laughs> Debbie says, I love painting candy corn, but I don't like to eat them. Me too, Debbie. I don't like to eat them at all, but I do love to paint them. It's fun. Um... Happy birthday, Denise. What are you watching on Hulu? I don't have Hulu, but they've been advertising some new TV shows. Uh, there's one called Murders in the Building or something like that, and it's got Martin Short and um, Selena Gomez and Steve Martin in it, and that, that looks really good, but I haven't been able to watch it because I don't have Hulu. Aw, Danette's waiting for a grandbaby to arrive. I'm just using my little dryer here. It does take a little longer to dry this um, this type of paint. It's the outdoor living paint. It's an interior exterior paint and it has a sealer built into it. So it's a little bit thicker. But you guys can probably see that the um, words and everything, the lines are starting to show through the paint. So that's really helpful for the next part. I may do one more coat on um, these little top areas with the white because those are actually going to be white. And then the, the next part will be orange and then the bottoms will be yellow. So we're just gonna put a second coat on those real quick. You're watching between classes. <laughs> Shan just got here. She's a student at the local university and she just got here to just take pictures of me while I paint. Just got out of class. Just got out of class. I don't miss those days. I mean, I did enjoy college, but I don't miss it. 
I'm glad I don't have to do it again. <coughs> I'm not even using my college degree in the traditional sense. I mean, it's for teaching elementary education, but I'm teaching you guys art. I don't, I guess that relates somehow. Um, I forgot I had the comments over here as well. And some of them I was like, ah, it disappeared. Um, Marina says, my husband saw an ad for the glow forge. He's really thinking about getting one. I'm so excited. Started showing your videos. Uh, that's exciting, Marina. Um, can you please tell me what kind of white paint you're using again? It is the Outdoor Living Paint by Deco Art. It's interior, exterior. It has built-in sealer. So you can get it at Deco Art's website. All right, so next we're going to paint the um, middle parts orange and then the bottom parts yellow. I had to think about it for just a minute. I always have to Google. Like I said, I always have to Google what order the colors are in for the candy corn. So we're just going to use this color it, only because I had a lot of it. It's called Orange Flame. Uh, this is not one that I usually use. I usually use like a, a canyon orange, but it's a little brighter. So I thought it might be good for a candy corn. Not to mention I had a full bottle of it. So don't feel like you have to go out and get the exact color that I'm using. Any orange will do. Um, Vicki is painting pumpkins. <laughs> I can't wait to do that. Thank you, Susan. She said my hair is adorable. I, I've been wearing a lot of headbands lately. I kind of take it in spells. I wear them for a while and then I get tired of them. <laughs> it's definitely not easy with a four-year-old going full-time student. Oh, I can only imagine. Okay, so this is the orange flame color. We're going to use this on the center part of the candy corn. And it's covering quite nicely because we already had, um, we already had the white underneath. So I switched to a smaller brush. This one's only about one inch wide. And I can still see the letters through the orange paint. So don't worry about that. Just paint right over them. It makes it so much easier to paint over them instead of around them. Oh, hey, by the way, your um, thermos you left in my car on when we went to do Hobby Lobby the other day. What thermos? Your, it was like a little thermos with, oh, a, with your coffee yeah. in it. So don't forget to get that when you leave. My husband's going to claim it as his own if, he, <laughs> if you don't take it back home with you. They got it at Goodwill. It's a good price. <laughs> um, Wanda wants a Nova 21. A Nova 21? There's a Nova 24. I don't think Nova 21's a thing. You may have just got the number mixed up. The Nova is the one that I cut this piece out on. It um, It's more robust and powerful than the Glowforge Pro. It does cost more, but you're really getting a lot more bang for your buck because it can um, cut stuff faster. Um, it has a lot more bells and whistles, like the, the um, air assist allows you to cut something without having to worry about the scorching marks. You know, on the Glowforge, you guys have seen me use the masking material before. And so that is to prevent the scorch marks for on the, from the laser on the wood. Um, but with the, the Thunder, you don't have to do that at all. You just put it in there and it's got this little air blower thing that kind of blows and keeps the, keeps the wood cool so that it doesn't scorch. It's kind of nice. Um, is there a discount code for murals and more? Yes, we'll put that in the comments for you. It saves you $2 on a brush. Having to pay attention here to where the, where the orange goes. I'm excited to use splatter paint on this. I may have to like move my laptop out of the way and everything when we go to do that because I don't want to get splatter paint on everything. I'm kind of messy when I do splatter paint. It tends to go everywhere. Y'all want to do some happy mail? We usually give away uh, three happy mails throughout a Facebook Live. Um, and we, oh, I forgot I have uh, TikTok on over here. Hello, TikTok. Oh. <laughs> Uh, she said, I've never painted one before, but I love to watch. Well, thanks for joining me. Um, but we usually pick somebody random in the comments to receive happy mail, and we send you some goodies in the mail. So um, answer this question, and we'll pick somebody random. Um, the first question would be, what is your favorite kind of Halloween candy? Is it is it candy corn? <laughs> so candy says, I always like happy mail. We always like to get stuff in the mail. 
Charlie always thinks that when a box comes in the mail, it's for her. Because a few of you guys have sent Charlie goodies in the mail before. And then, of course, my son, Brett, who just turned 11. He just had a birthday this weekend. He gets jealous, too. And he's like, well, where's my goodies in the mail? <laughs> I'm like, well, you don't appear on my Facebook Lives as much, and my Instagram stories as much as Charlie does. And so, people send Charlie stuff. <laughs> but she always wants to know when she's getting more happy mail. <laughs> Pamela likes Snickers. My husband loves Snickers, too. Those are his favorite. I have to agree, they're pretty good. But I would say my favorite is the Reese's Pumpkins. Not like a, like I love a regular Reese's Cup, don't get me wrong. But the Reese's Pumpkins, the Reese's Christmas Trees, and the Reese's Easter Eggs taste different. They're just different. They have like less chocolate. The chocolate's smoother somehow. They're just better, in my opinion. Jelly Beans, Roxanna. Jelly Beans, really? Those are nasty. <gasps> and uh, Shan, Shan went, <gasps> blasphemous, speaking about jelly beans in such a way. I thought jelly beans were more of an Easter sort of thing. Are they ha Halloween, too? They're kind of a year. They're starting to turn more of a year. Oh, of course they, they are. They were like an Easter thing. <laughs> well, I think Harry Potter has made them. Yeah. Oh, Harry Potter did that. Harry Potter was a blessing to the jelly bean industry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, candy corn mixed with peanuts is the only way I will do candy corn. Shan is making an awful face. We've got to get you no, to try that. So <laughs> next Tuesday, Aaliyah, we're going to get some candy corn and peanuts and make Shan try it on Facebook Live. <laughs> She's like, down. I'll be down. <laughs> I found out what a picky eater Shan is when we went on that trip to Hobby Lobby together. <laughs> She's one of those athlete people. <laughs> <laughs> she said, oh, it's just too much sugar. I'm like, what? There's no <laughs> such thing. <laughs> So, the next color I'm using is the Primary Yellow by DecoArt, and we're just going to use this on the bottom section of our candy corn. Her parrot eats candy corn. Somebody in the comments says, parrot eats candy corn. Their parrot eats candy corn. I amazing. want a parrot. That sounds like fun. No. That's amazing. <laughs> okay, so first Happy Mail winner is Kimberly Meadows. Kimberly, send us an email with your address, and Shan and I will package you up some Happy Mail and send it to you. Thank you for being here today. Samantha loves Reese's Cups. Me too. So there is a house that we used to go to when we were trick-or-treat, and they always had full-size candy bars. Not the fun-size ones, full-size candy bars. You could get Reese's Cups, Snickers, um, Hershey bars, whatever, and my kids loved that house. Of course, me and my husband did too, and they were the kind of people that didn't get very many trick-or-treaters, so they were always like, here, you guys take one too. <laughs> but my kids know that Reese's Cups are my favorite. And my son, who is about to turn 15 next month, hates peanut butter. I mean, hates peanut butter. And so, if he uh, sees Reese's Cup in the basket, he's a sweetheart. He, he'll he still get it and put it in his, um, his trick-or-treat bucket because he knows Mama likes them. And so, he likes to give them to me when he gets home. Of course, I'm not mad about it. <laughs> Pumpkin pie Kit Kats, they're good. Really? Lynn says she's tried them. I haven't Ooh. tried those. I saw some the other day that looked like they had Fruity Pebbles in them or something. They were like white chocolate with Fruity Pebble flavor. <laughs> Popcorn and M&Ms. My kids love that too. They get those when we go to the theater. So I'm still just using this little flat tip brush. I've only used two different kinds of brushes the whole time we've been painting here. I just rinsed it out. And... Um, we're just filling in this yellow. Then we'll do some splatter paint. And then lastly, we will do the lettering. We're gonna save the lettering for last. I love the way these colors look together though. You love frozen Reese's Cups. I've never tried them frozen. Well, okay, I take it back. When I worked at the Dairy Queen, they always had Reese's Cups that were like chopped up. And a lot of times when we were restocking the candies in the in the store, they would be frozen. So I had tried them that way, but I don't think I prefer them that way. I like the peanut butter to be nice and soft. What size is your flat tip brush? Oh, this one's about one inch wide. The Fruity Pebbles Kit Kats are good, really? Y'all are making me hungry. We're just talking about food. Okay, I didn't get very close to the line on a couple of these colors, so I gotta go in and kinda clean it up a little with some orange or something. 
So let me show you so far what we've got. Candy pumpkins. Somebody said they like the candy pumpkins. I have a friend that loves the candy pumpkins. See how you can still see the lettering through the paint if you kind of shift it in the light? Frozen peppermint patties. Ooh, I've never liked peppermint patties. They're way too pepperminty for me. Oh, that sounds good. <laughs> Aaliyah says those sound good, though. Every time I hear patties, I think of the little the SpongeBob Krabby patties. Krabby patties? My love kids love those. SpongeBob Krabby patties. They do. All right, I'm switching back to the orange for just a second. And I'm just going to go through and touch up a couple places where I got over the orange with my yellow. Just to make it look a little smoother along the edge here. And I really kind of feel like one coat of the orange and one coat of the yellow was going to be enough. There's only a couple places that needed a little touch up. Um, and that's probably because we did that white underneath and the white covered really well. And so it made it to where the orange and the yellow covered better. Your friend Nikki says yuck, no pumpkins. Hey, Nikki. She said yuck, no pumpkins. We have a friend, Nikki, Miss Megan, who loves those, those little candy corn pumpkins. She always used to go to the Walmart as soon as they started putting the fall candy out and she would grab them things. I think they're nasty though. Why would anyone do that? I don't know. I think they're gross. Candy corn in general. <laughs> sugar babies. I haven't had a sugar baby in a long time. Um, you're struggling, struggling taping your template together. Um, I think I have a video on... IGTV showing how to do the templates. Uh, the easiest way I feel like is to take your tape and attach it to one side of your paper and then set it down on top of the template where you're wanting it to tape together. It's easier to line it up that way than try to line up the paper and then lay your tape down on top of it. Andy's mints. Yes, I agree, Terry. Andy's mints are way better than, than York peppermint patties. <laughs> Oh, Darla says her niece makes homemade peppermint patties. Hmm. Do you like the new heating tool, Dreama? She said she bought one a couple weeks ago. Thank you, Mika. Um, so, Mika says, I wish I was that talented to be able to paint. You guys have heard me say it before, and I'll say it again. Painting is not something that you're just born with. This is a learned skill. It's something anybody can do. You guys can learn to paint just like this too. That's why I teach it. Because um, if I was just born with this and everybody had to be born with the talent of painting, there wouldn't be any point for me to come on here and try to teach you. Um, it's, it's a learned skill. So if you sit down with paints and brushes and you follow along, I guarantee you can, make, you can do this too. And it may not look perfect the first time, but you know, you do two or three of these and you will start to get better and better at it and it'll get easier and easier. <clears throat> okay, let's do some splatter paint. I've got a little toothbrush here, an old toothbrush, not, not my current toothbrush. <laughs> and we're gonna do some splatter paint with a little bit of yellow and maybe a little bit of white. So <clears throat> I think if I remember correctly, you're supposed to water down your paint that you're splattering with. So I'm gonna do that first. I'm gonna mix some water with my yellow. and then we're gonna splatter it. So I'm using the bottom end of a paintbrush to mix this. You don't want that paint getting all gunked up in the brushes, the bristles. Okay, let's do some white. I'm gonna use a different kind of white than the, than the one we used on the background. This is just a regular DecoArt Snow White. A Little bit of that, a little bit of water. It doesn't matter if your water's a little dirty. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine. Good morning, Cindy, how are you? Betsy says she loves doing splatter paint. Me too, I just, I tend to make a mess of myself when I do it. There's a splatter tool on Amazon. I do have the splatter tool. Um, I don't know where it's at. I don't, it may be put up in the cabinet right now, but so we'll just use a toothbrush probably. But I do have a tool somewhere around here. It was one of my Fab Five items a while back and I kind of forgot about it. Will you move my laptop so I don't splatter all over that and the mouse? <laughs> We're gonna remove move the important stuff. I'm not worried about my desktop because my desktop here, um, I can scrub it with like a little uh, scrubber and I can also use a scraping tool. Is that good right there? Yeah, that's fine. 
All right, so let's start with some of the yellow. I'm gonna dip my toothbrush in the yellow. We got some yellow paint here. And I think the trick is to use your opposite hand to flick the paint. So we're just gonna take and just go. Let's try flicking different directions too. Let's get a little bit more paint. So fun. So it doesn't really matter if you get the yellow on the yellow because you're not gonna see it. There we go, that's the key to it. It's kinda pulling the brush towards your body and keeping your hand kinda stationary. I think that's the trick. Are you putting, <laughs> Aaliyah's putting a Walmart sack over my laptop over there. She's afraid I'm gonna get kinda wild with it. All right, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna wipe my hand off for a second here and kinda rinse that brush. <clears throat> and then we're gonna switch and do white. <clears throat> it's fun and messy, yes. Try taping the toothbrush down onto a paintbrush handle. Oh, that sounds like too much trouble. <laughs> if I'm being completely honest, that sounds like too much trouble. I like to just kind of quickly fly by the seat of my pants and do things. All right, I'm not gonna even gonna completely rinse out this toothbrush because it doesn't matter. Pick up some white here and we're gonna do some white. That way we have some showing on our yellow candy corn. So fun, so messy. Just get those drips on there. All right, I think that looks pretty good. I don't wanna go overboard because it's easy to go overboard with it and to not be able to find a quitting spot. Kind of wipe up these drips. That way I don't get it all over me. There we go. Will you hand me one? Well, that's on my shirt. Under the right boob. Under the right boob, okay. Uh, Sandra says she hates candy corn too. I do too. I only eat it with peanuts. It's the only way I'll handle it. It's all right. We'll get some rubbing alcohol after that paint later and it'll come out. Okay. I think I may have done that when I was painting the background of the candy corn. I don't think that was splatter paint. Okay. Let me show you what it looks like so far. Look, look how fun and kind of messy. Super cute. We could do a little bit of orange splatter on the, the white, but I don't know. I kind of feel like that's probably enough. I kind of feel like that is. So I'm gonna dry it for just a second because in order to do our lettering, this is gonna have to be, the splatter paint will have to be a little dry. Your kids love the candy corn. Try putting corn in your Reese's. Mmm, that might ruin my Reese's, Shelly. <laughs> Let's do some more Happy Mail while we're waiting for this to dry. What was the second question we came up with for Happy Mail? Oh, when you when it comes to your Halloween decor, do you like cute or creepy Halloween decor? If you were to ask my daughter Charlie, she would say creepy all the way. We went in Big Lots yesterday, and she wanted me to buy one of these, like, crawling zombie creatures that like when you walk by it, it crawls out and like tries to grab you. She loves scary stuff. Um, <laughs> TikTok saying cute, creepy, wood or cardboard. So Sherry, this is wood that we're painting on. It's not cardboard. Um, Deb, this is one of the newer templates, but yes, you can go back and watch this later. Can somebody said candy corn peanuts and mini marshmallows together tastes like a salted nut roll. I've never tried it with the marshmallows, but I'm definitely gonna add that as a, as an idea. Only cute and whimsical. Somebody said both, creepy outside and a perfect mix inside. Um, I've kind of done both before. So when we first moved into this house, I was obsessed with my Cricut machine. And I went through and cut out a ton of little spiders out of black vinyl. And I made the spiders look like they were crawling up the wall. I like stuck the vinyl spiders all over everything in the house. So it looked like there were spiders coming out of like the cabinets and everything. And then I also cut out some bats and made it look like the bats were flocking up the wall. That was before I had a business <laughs> and a baby. <laughs> I had a lot more time. Um, and so we've done, we've done a little bit of both. Now it's probably a little bit more on the fall. I don't really decorate for Halloween as much now. I just do fall decor. 
So comment if you like cute or creepy, and we'll pick somebody random to win some happy mail. Robin says we need to try caramel candy corn. It's delightful, but hard to find. Hmm. I haven't seen that one. <laughs> you said nothing creepy or your puppy would flip out. That's funny. Um, okay, second happy mail winner is Jennifer Schill Bland. So, Jennifer, if you're still watching, send us an email with your snail mail address so we can send you some happy mail. Nikki said, not with the traditional decor. You have pink pumpkins. I would never expect any less of you, Nikki. Pink sounds like you for sure. I think you still have a pink front door, don't you? Okay, this is looking pretty dry now. It's not, like there's a couple of really like big splatters that are still wet, but I think it's dry enough. I can go ahead and start doing the lettering. So I'm gonna get this round, or, or filbert tip brush. See how it's kind of curved up here on the tip? We're gonna use that brush to do our lettering. This one's a size four filbert tip brush. And we're gonna get some black paint and we're gonna add a little bit of water to it to make it easier to flow as we do our lettering. Yeah, I prefer fall decor over Halloween decor. Rachel says the caramel apple candy corn is good. I don't know. I do like those caramel apple suckers though. If you've ever had those, those are good. We used to eat those a lot as kids and that takes me back. It's real nostalgic. Okay, so with your black paint, just be careful and don't drip it, but you're gonna be able to paint right inside the letters that are already etched on this door hanger. So it's like paint by number. You're just filling in the areas with the lettering. So if you are not good at hand lettering, these etched blanks are great to use, or you can use one of our templates and use some graphite paper to transfer the lettering to the wood. Makes hand lettering so much easier. I may have gotten a little too much water in my black paint. It's very slick. So we'll just have to be careful and not get it all over the place. Shan's trying to catch an action shot of me. Hand lettering. If you haven't seen our blog yet, I want to encourage you to go over to southerndadornamentsdecor.com forward slash blog and check it out. We have lots of really helpful blog posts that kind of like help you get started with door hanger painting. Um, if you're not sure where to begin, there's instructions if you need help with figuring out how to use templates. There's some links to some tutorials in there. Um, there's some posts about the Glowforge if you have questions about it. We're also working on a blog post that compares the Glowforge and the Thunder Laser. So if you're kind of not sure which machine is right for you, we're putting together a blog post that should, you know, help kind of line out the pros and cons of each machine and why some would be better than others. Hang on. I got a little bit of black paint or something on the edge of my finger and it's transferring it to the door hanger. Thankfully, baby wipe will take care of that. It looks like a little black smudge. What kind of brush are you using to letter with? This is a filbert tip brush, size four. And I'm just painting inside the lines. I'm not freehanding this. The lines are etched in my door hanger. And so you may or may not be able to see them on video, but it makes it super simple because I'm not having to figure out where to put the letters or how to do the lettering. I'm just painting inside those etched lines. And you can get this design at shopdoorhangers.com. That's our website where we have all of our designs for sale. This is called a wood blank. Sometimes people get confused about the difference. Templates are a digital download and that's for you to cut your own blanks. If you want to paint one of ours, you need to get the ones that are called blanks and they have the designs etched in them. And they come in four sizes too. So if you don't want one this big, maybe you just want a real small one to go on a tiered tray, you can get a six inch size or maybe you want to attach it to a wreath, you could get the 12 inch size. This one is the 20 inch. I 
<laughs> Marina, that's funny. She said her husband used to trick the kids by talking to them when they were trick-or-treating through the ring doorbell speaker. Mm -hmm. I would think with some of these Amazon Alexa products, you could really set up some really cool and creepy Halloween decor nowadays. Oh, there was a spot. <laughs> Look at my arm. There was still some splatter paint that was wet. And I stuck my arm right in it. The splatter paint's kind of cool because if you're a bit of a messy painter, the splatter paint is very forgiving um, in that it hides a lot of the flaws on the, you know, underside of your paint. So if I had gotten real messy with the orange or the yellow or the white, you really wouldn't notice it because the splatter paint kind of disguises it. So one little tip when you're doing hand lettering like this, if you have a hard time, <clears throat> if you have a hard time getting a nice smooth edge when you're painting, instead of like flicking your brush down to the edge of the letter, when you come down to the edge of the letter, push down, push down, push down, then lift straight up. If you lift straight up, you'll have a nice smooth end on those letters. Let me show you this. Look how cute. We're not quite done. We still have some finishing details to add. Oh, thank you. Somebody said I'm an inspiration. You're sweet. You like vintage creepy. That sounds cute. cool. All right, I'm going to dry this real quick, and then we're going to add some final details. Um, hand me that yellow pasta pen in there. We're going to use a yellow paint pen to add some highlights on our letters. And then we'll do use a black paint pen to add some details. Let's do one more happy mail before we wrap it up. Um, so you guys know that we're releasing a Procreate course on September 27th, right? Procreate is an app that you can download on your iPad or your iPhone. I recommend doing it on an iPad though. And you can design stuff like this. Um, you can also use it sort of as a digital coloring book. Some people use it to design like stickers um, or t-shirts. And so if you've been wanting to learn how to use the Procreate course, I did put a link to the wait list in the video description. Um, but I would like to know, the question I want you to answer for Happy Mail is, if you were to learn Procreate, what would you use it for? Would you be designing stickers, door hanger templates, t-shirts, maybe something I haven't even thought of yet? What would you like to use Procreate for? Answer that question for me. Crystal Lynn says, I want in on that class. A lot of you watching on TikTok have been telling me that's something you want to learn as well. Um, I had a, a TikTok about Procreate the other day, and everybody was saying, yes, they want to learn it. So that's going to be opening up September 27th. Um, make sure and get your name on the wait list. Being on the wait list does not mean that there's only a certain number of spots. It simply means that we will contact you September 27th so you know when the class is open and you don't miss out on it because a lot of times, you know, life gets busy and we forget. Um, and so you want to be on that list. Crystal Lynn says tumblers. How exactly though? I'm kind of curious, like what, how would you use Procreate to design a tumbler? I don't understand tumblers. I don't know how they, how, how people do those. Um, design stickers and t-shirts, door hanger templates. What else? Uh, somebody on TikTok said t-shirts. Okay, this is nice and dry. Autumn says hand lettering. Yes, yes, yes. You would like to use it for door hangers and t-shirts. Stencils. That's an, a good one, Leslie. Oh, I meant to get the yellow out, not the black. To learn to make designs. Okay. All right. We're going to pick a Happy Mail winner in just a second. So this is the 5 millimeter Posca pen. These came in a set, I think, of 15. And there were like 15 different colors in there. And so the yellow one... I'm going to use to add some little details to our lettering. So I'm going to do like a little dot, dot, and then a line on each letter. So like two dots and a line going down. And it just adds a fun little whimsical detail to the lettering. And I'll show you what it looks like close up in just a second. Cute. Where'd the lid go? There it is. 
Uh, happy mail winner is Leslie Tabor. Leslie, send us a email with your mailing address and we'll send you some happy mail. Look at that fun little detail on the lettering. Isn't that cute? So it just adds a little bit of a, an extra touch. Somebody said, I can't wait for the class. I've been painting door hangers and I would love to use it for that. Well, you are in luck. September 27th. Hand lettering is a great idea. Yes, <laughs> Billy wants to design earrings. Oh, I'm curious how that would work as well. There's so many things it can be used for, so I'm always curious what people wanna use it for. All right, so this is the five millimeter tip, and we're just gonna use this to add some definition to our candy corn. Um, I don't want it to interfere with the lettering, so I'm gonna stop just short of the lettering in most areas and just kind of define between them. No, because you can't use Procreate on an Android device. I think that's so crappy of them. They need to make it available for Android users, but unfortunately there's nothing I can do about that one. What do you use all the pictures that are being taken for? For the blog. We have a blog, you guys. Also for social media and stuff like that, but definitely go... Um, Go subscribe to the blog and go uh, check it out. There's lots of great tips and tutorials on there uh, for painting door hangers. And so it helps to have great photos to go along with those tips and things that help you kind of understand how to do things even if you didn't watch the video. All right, a few little spots kind of in between some of the letters there. All right, that looks good. All right, so there is our finishing detail. See how outlining some of the colors and the edges of the candy corn just kind of made them stand out a little bit better. Uh, Wanda, these are from uh, Amazon, the Posca pens. They come in a pack of six. You get two of the really large ones that are a seven millimeter bullet tip. You get two five millimeter and two three millimeter. I use the five most often, but you get a black and white of each size. So that's super helpful. Thank you guys for watching on TikTok also. Here's a close-up look at it. So I think this would be super cute with a fun bow right up here at the top. I think it would look really great on a wreath also. Um, you can find the blog at southernadornmentsdecor.com. Um, did I miss any other questions? Where did you get your glitter brush? I think we've linked them up in the comments before now. So go back and uh, scroll back in the comments a bit and you'll see it there. Can Procreate be used on a laptop that isn't Apple? No, so Procreate has to be used on an iPad or you can use the pocket version on a phone, but it's gonna be really difficult to design on a screen that's this big. So an iPad is what you're gonna have to have and you're gonna need a stylus. I highly recommend an Apple Pencil. So it's a bit of an investment, but um, it's, an, it's an amazing tool that you can use in your business. And the requirements are on the waitlist page. Yes, the requirements for what you're going to need are on the waitlist page. So go get your name on there. Um, and we do plan on sending out a free Procreate brush that I designed to everybody on the waitlist pretty soon. So make sure your name is on there and watch for that email to come out. Um, yes, you can also design stuff to use on the Cricut with Procreate. That's a great idea too. Thank you, Bobby. All right, you guys, y'all have a great afternoon and I'll see you on Friday for Friday Fab Five. If you wanna be notified when I go live, just text me. I put my number up in the description. Bye, you guys.